Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is eight o'clock, so I'd like to call the meeting of JPS to order. Uh, roll call, please. Chair Ranahan. Here. Member Chaplin. Here. Member Covert. Member Desart. Here. Member Eckhoff. Member Garcia. Member Kajewski. Member Ozog. Here. Member Kachalski. Member Schwarzy. Here. Member Salman. Here. Member Zay. Here. Member Eckhoff. All right, great. Uh, do we have any public comment? No public comment. No public comment. All right, so we are moving on today on our budget discussions. We will be hearing from the 18th Circuit Court. So I'd like to welcome Chief Judge Pope Joy and Board Administrator Susie Ann Armstrong and the whole team that's over here from the court. Uh, thanks so much for being here. And we will be hearing in our finance special call this afternoon from our public defender and our state's attorney. So I'd like to thank, on every, thank everyone so much for working on budgeting. And with that, I'll move on. I take a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, those are approved. Now we have one budget transfer. Uh, I'll take a motion uh, transfer of funds for the sheriff's office from account of instruction schooling, wire communication, repair and maintenance, $70,000 to cover incoming invoices for AT&T. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, that is approved. Also only one action item today. I'll take a motion on county contract 5631 serve issue to Lexus Nexus, Matthew Bender, decreasing by $31,228.66. So can you tell me who moved here? I'm sorry, who was the motion? Krajewski, second Thank you. was Chaplin. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, just a comment on that. I guess that is a, a decrease that we want to note because it's going you know, we've talked a lot about books in the past in terms of physical to software, and we're actually seeing a savings here, so I should have brought that up. Um, I will take a motion to receive and place on file informational item, Public Defender's Office, July 2021 monthly statistical report. Questions, comments? Who's second? So, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, that will be received and placed on file. And with that, we will move to the 18th Judicial Circuit Court budget and Chief Judge Oakley. Thanks again for being here. It's a problem sitting on top of the <clears throat> Okay, back it up the first slide, please. Good morning. It's good to see you all again. As you know, I'm Ken Popejoy. I'm the chief judge of the 18th Judicial Circuit, effective last December. Up until 1957, the DuPage County Courts were a part of the 16th Judicial Circuit, along with Kane, DeKalb, and Kendall Counties. It was then that the Illinois legislature separated out DuPage County, making it the second county in the state to constitute its own judicial circuit. There have been many changes since the 18th Judicial Circuit was established. Most of these changes happened gradually as the population of DuPage grew. But one thing hasn't changed. Our circuit court always has been and continues to this day to be the leader statewide for judicial performance, innovation, and efficiency. The previous county boards of this legislative branch have received every year the budget presentation from every one of my predecessors. As the stewards for the citizens of DuPage County, you have the responsibility to review and approve the expenditures necessary for the continued effective performance of the judicial branch of county government. Yet there is a unique dynamic underlying our interrelationship. As judges, we are created and employed through the state of Illinois. <clears throat> Our numbers and necessity are determined by the state Supreme Court, which is funded through the oversight of the state legislature. In addition, both you as the legislative body and us as the judicial branch are charged with various mandates and direction from the state legislature. 
So here we are today, my very first budget presentation to my county board through its JPS committee, with a number of members who are involved in their very first budget oversight review. My presentation is one of many that you are going to be hearing from various government offices, but mine is the only presentation from another dis distinct branch of government. In order to maintain the 18th Judicial Circuit and DuPage County's place in the leadership throughout this state, <clears throat> this budget's approval is essential. My staff and I have spent extensive time and effort in the complete review and examination of our operations in order to keep efficiency and productivity at the forefront of our day-to-day -day performance. I could not be more proud and honored to lead this circuit's 48 judges in sharing with you the stewardship of this county's oversight of the needs and requirements of our mutual constituency, the citizens of DuPage County. Next slide, please. <clears throat> in light of my observations and experiences over my now hard to believe, but 44 plus year career as a licensed attorney in DuPage County. The COVID pandemic has changed everything. In order to keep cases moving and ensure access to justice for our citizens, the court was required to change and adapt overnight. Within months and with the collaborative relationship between our branches of government, a decade's worth of progress was made and Zoom was integrated into every non-traffic courtroom. DuPage County led the charge statewide to not only embrace Zoom, but acknowledge its effectiveness in helping us maintain essential day-to-day -day court services for our citizens. And today I'm here to tell you that Zoom is here to stay. This is the beginning of a new era in the 18th Judicial Circuit. To symbolize the new era, I'm proud to unveil today the rebranding of our new seal for the 18th Judicial Circuit Court. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Creating this seal was truly a collaborative effort between trial court administrator Suzanne Armstrong, former Chief Judge Dan Guerin, Joan Olson, and the talented design team of the DuPage County Health Department. Beyond our seal, I also want to give a special thanks and acknowledgement to our Health Department for the COVID guidance and vaccine deployment. I want to give a special thanks and acknowledgement to the County Board for their allegation of CARES Act and ARPA funds. And I want to give a special thanks and acknowledgement to our county's staff and leadership in public safety, finance, IT support, and services. Across the aisles of county government, we have all worked together to address the challenges in this unprecedented time. We have all made and embraced significant changes, and our new seal represents the rebirth and start of a new era in DuPage County performance. Next slide, please. In DuPage County, 18th Judicial Circuit, we have a total of 48 judges. 15 of those are circuit judges. Circuit judges are elected countywide and then must stand for retention every six years thereafter. We also have 33 associate judges. Those are appointed by the circuit judges and serve a four-year term and may be reappointed. Next slide, please. The 15th circuit judges also elect a chief judge every three years to act as chief executive officer of the circuit. As chief judge, I have the duties to oversee general administrative authority over the circuit, determine judicial assignments, set times and places the court will be in session, entering administrative orders, setting court policy, and overseeing personnel and, here we are, budget matters. Next slide, please. Within the court system, we have six divisions. The law division deals with money damage cases, the chancery division with equitable cases, remedies, um, injunctions, things of that nature. Domestic relations is for divorce and paternity, misdemeanor, minor criminal offenses, felony major criminal offenses, and just established in June of 2020 by my predecessor, Dan Guerin, Specialty and Juvenile Courts Division. Next slide, please. In addition to the two juvenile courts that we have in that division, there are four specialty courts, Drug Court, Veterans Court, MICAP, and FOCUS. These are all certified by the AOIC. Now that's the Administrative Office of Illinois Courts. That is set up by the Supreme Court, is overseen by the Supreme Court, and the AOIC oversees all of the judges in every judicial circuit throughout the state. For, the, for these specialty courts, certification is a rigorous process. 
It takes years. It takes constant review, constant change, constant auditing. And we are very proud that we've received, received certification across the board. Not all offenders can participate in specialty courts though. There are certain requirements to be eligible. The key thing though, is that a defendant must have a willingness to participate. They must want the treatment, oversight and accountability. Any entry into the specialty courts is a minimum two year participation. Participants are provided with tools that help them towards a path to recovery. It's also a non-adversarial approach. Contrary to what some of us do as judges, these judges keep the participants on track, even if they fall off. They don't provide negative remedies, they provide positive reasons to get back on track. And that's the benefit of these courts. It, we increase court appearances to maintain accountability. We have unique incentives which focus on maintaining recovery. And at the end, a successful program of completion results in the fulfillment of a contract. Charges are reduced, charges are amended or dismissed, and we have a graduation ceremony for our participants. We have found these courts to be extremely successful in view of offenders' change of life patterns, which lessens recidivism and creates a more significant re-entry into an active participation in our lifestyle and county activities. Next slide, please. So here we go. Thank you for your patience with me and your attentiveness to my presentation. Next slide, please. My office oversees nine budgets contained in three categories, the general fund, tax levy, and fee funded. Next slide, please. As you can see in this summary, oh, if you can see, that's pretty good eyesight, but <laughs> if you can see, I know you've got them in front of you also. Fortunately, I hope you do, but um, these are the overall nine budgets under my direction and supervision. And the total of those budgets put all together show a decrease of $138,217. Next slide, please. We've also provided a pie chart to give you a little better idea so you can see the allocation and the needs of our funding. Next slide, please. So the first of three categories is the, of the general fund is the circuit court. Next slide, please. Now, what have we done? Well, we've continued to perform the necessary and essential business of the court in every courtroom, despite the constraints of COVID. We've resumed jury trials in both criminal and civil cases. And it's important to note, we are the first circuit in the metropolitan area of our state to can resume jury trials and to function with them effectively. We've integrated Zoom in all divisions. We received our final certification of MICAP and veteran courts programs that were years in preparation. With your help and as funded by the CARES Act and your collaboration with us, we have completed the construction of three new courtrooms and the reconfigur reconfiguration of three other courtrooms, all to accommodate jury trials and or social distancing. And I'll tell you, around the state, they're just amazed at what we have done. And they're amazed at the collaborative nature that the county board has utilized in helping us. There's 24 chief judges around the state. They all complain about their county board. They all say, oh my God, we can't do this, we can't do that. One poor guy is the chief judge of a circuit that has 12 counties. He has 12 county boards to go in front of. I say, dear God, that's unbelievable. But I am so proud and I wear it with a badge of honor. What a great job this county board has done collaborating with the 18th Judicial Circuit. And thank you very much. The additional things that we've done are an eviction mediation program, which we're just starting up to get ready for the onslaught that's gonna take off on us. And we've established virtual self-represented litigant assistant center. Next slide, please. Now, here's the big one. What do we need? Well, we need these in order to keep the hard work and effort of our judiciary performing at a level necessary to serve the citizens of DuPage County. In order to do that, we have four monetary requests. 44,000 for an additional legal secretary to support the specialty and juvenile court division. Right now, we have three secretaries, administrative assistants for 23 felony, misdemeanor, and juvenile judges. We have found with these specialty courts, there's a lot of input that's needed from our administrative assistants. There's a lot of phone calls that are coming in. There's a lot of need with the public to get access to what they need to do. And these three secretaries that we currently have now are stressed beyond belief. We need one more for this specialty court to help. We can take the two juvenile court judges into that 
secretary, free up a little bit more for our domestic relations assistance and can help overall take care of and manage the citizens' needs when they're calling in. Second thing, we need a $10,000 increase for small IT equipment needed to support the increased and innovative technology needs of the court. We need a $30,000 increase for the collective bargaining services to negotiate the probation contract that expires November 30th of 2022. Now, this is another new event for me as, as your new chief judge. I wanna get ahead of this. The last contract was a four year contract that ends in 2022, but we didn't get it done until two years into the quote unquote contract. I wanna get ahead of this and get on top of this so that we move ahead and have this effective when the time is needed. Because I want to ensure that the uninterrupted effectiveness of our standing probation department goes without any limitation. Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry, one more, I apologize. Uh, the $20,000 increase for transcripts for indigent litigants. The appellate court, um, you know, when we do fee waivers, somebody gets uh, the ability to file without filing any, paying any expense for same. The appellate court has now said for anybody that has a fee waiver, they, we also have to provide the transcript for them if they come to a point of appealing the case in the future. We have a number of checks that are laid out to make sure that we monitor that over time. So we make sure there's any changes that take care of things, but we are gonna need additional funds to cover those transcripts. Next slide, please. The next general fund budget is that of the jury commission. We have an amazing jury commission. The fact that we've been able to do so well with our jury trials is primarily because we have an amazing jury commission. They have continued to oversee our citizens' involvements in the essential service of jury duty in light of COVID and in doing so have improved juror experience. We poll jurors on the way in, we poll jurors on the way out. We get comments from them. What can we do better? How can we do this better? How comfortable are you? Are there other things that we can do to help you in the service to make it more comfortable and the like for you? It's been amazing what we've seen and the comments we have are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of favorable comments. Thank you. We were so afraid coming in. We were so concerned about what was going on. It worked out great. Thank you. We enjoyed service. We were proud to do it. Starting in March, we've also had 37 jury trials to date. That just blows the rest of the state away. I think the entire state hasn't had 37 jury trials. We have, and they continue to ask me, how's it been working? How's it been going? It's working great, thanks to all of you. We've had both civil and criminal jury trials. Our grand jury has remained in session the entire time, and we've continued scheduled weddings by, by appointment. Next slide, please. Our jurors remain one of the most valued members of the judicial process. And as citizens, their comments and input couldn't be more important to us. We are pleased with the comments about the job that we've been doing. And here are three of hundreds that I could have provided to you that we've received in our jury polling and the like. Next slide, please. In regard to our jury trials, obviously 2020 was a pretty big drop off from January to March 1, that's all that we could do. And after that, we were dead in the water for jury trials until we got those courtrooms completed and the like. But since we started up this March, we've had 37 jury trials as of the end of July. Now, if you extrapolate that for a 12 month time frame, that's on pace for 24 jury trials in a 12 month time frame. We are not far behind 18 and 19. We have almost gotten done with our backlog. Matter of fact, in traffic court, our backlog is done effective September. We have caught up completely with everything. Next slide, please. The next general fund budget is that of probation. Next slide, please. The probation accomplishments are amazing in light of COVID. They've completed 33,700 contacts with approximately 3,600 individuals, despite all the constraints of this pandemic. They were awarded a $25,000 HOPE Task Force grant to link approximately 40 high-risk opiate users with recovery coaches in the community. And they've added a fourth probation officer to the focus team, which had a 90% success rate in 2020. Next slide, please. In our juvenile division of the probation department, they focus on providing effective services to high-risk offenders, diverting low-risk offenders from the formal court system, and identifying juveniles who've been exposed to trauma and referring them to appropriate treatment. Next slide, please. As you can see from the probation workload comparison, there hasn't even been a speed bump. In fact, it's starting to take off even more and more because their work is unaffected by COVID. 
But their work involves those things that are involved, services that are mandated by criminal sentences and those that are just actually needed on a day-to-day -day basis for the people involved. Next slide, please. In regard to pretrial services, you can also see how their workload has developed over time and increases in various things that are happening. One of the effects of COVID that makes these numbers a little higher is that cases are lasting longer because of COVID. It takes us a longer time to get them done, get them through the system and the like. So the numbers have increased. Our probation department is working beyond belief. It is a tireless group of individuals in our probation department who are providing these services and we couldn't function without their continued effective performance. Next slide, please. And as a result of that hard work, commitment and effort of our probation department, you can see 93.7% of defendants supervised by pretrial services appeared for their court dates. That's the whole purpose of pretrial services. Get you back into court when the time comes. That's what this whole bond act is gonna be doing later on. This is, we're getting a head start on this. We're getting ahead of this. And look at the job that probation department's doing. Furthermore, 96.7% of defendants supervised by pretrial services were not rearrested. Isn't that what it's all about? And the meaningful supervision by our probation department assists in that. Next slide, please. The last general fund budget is that of DRI evaluation. Next slide, please. Again, in light of COVID, we still had 1,627 evaluations that took place in 2020. We've adapted the Department of Health Services telehealth regulations to continue providing the evaluations, and we've maintained licensure through strict adherence to policies and procedures. Next slide, please. The second of three categories of budgets that I oversee is the tax levy. Next slide, please. The detention screening and transport budget was formerly known as juvenile transport budget and the youth home budget. This budget was reduced from over $3.8 million in fiscal year 2010 compared to $945,000 in fiscal year 2020, saving DuPage County taxpayers over 20 million in the past decade. Now, we didn't save DuPage County taxpayers 20 million, you folks did. You did this as a direct result of your decision in 2011 to close the youth home and contract with King County for juvenile detention services only for the most serious juvenile offenders. Next slide, please. As you can see, we've had a great number of juvenile detention screenings and the like. We've kept a minimum number to those actually detained over in Kane County. But there are some that are necessary with the nature of the crime, the risk that's involved and the like, a few are necessary to be detained and we do that for the benefit of the public. Next slide, please. The third category of our budget is fee funded. Now, I've talked about drug court and my cap before. We've already talked about them in my presentation and their line items are relatively flat one way or the other. But in regard to our, the library, that's our sleeping giant. The continuing transition from bound books to online services could lead one to erroneously conclude that libraries are obsolete. Yet our judicial library has grown, accommodated, and adjusted to the times, while still providing the essential services and supply of hard copy volumes for those attorneys, pro se litigants, and judges like me, who still use them on a daily basis. I love walking in with a set of books. It has a great effect with the lawyers, one way or the other. You've actually read this stuff, you know? Um, the accomplishments of our library, just to show how they've adapted, how they've changed, how they've been innovative. They've assisted self-represented litigants and attorneys with remote access to court proceedings via Zoom. They've managed a self-help center with nine Zoom stations in, in the library itself. And they've provided legal research, information, and assistance to residents via, via email, telephone, and in-person activities. Next slide, please. The final fee-funded budget is that of probation fees. Next budget, please. Go next slide. Next budget, please. There's enough budgets. Next slide, please. For this, there are certain allowed expenditures under the probation fee budget. These expenditures are mandated by statute and overseen by that AOIC that I keep referring to. They are our big brothers, so to speak, in certain ways. Um, the allowed expenditures include court-ordered services, including psychological, substance, psychiatric, and substance abuse counseling, payments to the health department to cover treatment of mentally ill defendants, bulletproof vests, IT equipment, vehicle maintenance and fuel, drug testing supplies, and interpreting services. Next, next slide, please. I could not be more humble or honored to stand before you today. I have come to meet and know every one of you, 
whether before my short tenure to date as chief judge or during it. Your job responsibilities and oversight review is a daunting task to say the least. I was blown away enough by nine, nine budgets that I had to work on. Lord knows all that you have to review and oversee and maintain. On behalf of all the judges and our amazing support staff, all of whom who are here with me today, it was quite an entourage. I was kind of the thorn among the roses. We were all walking over and said, wow, this is a good group we got, you know? Um, but on behalf of all of us, thank you for your thoughtful analysis and understanding of our needs and requirements in order to keep the 18th Judicial Circuit the standard for circuits throughout the state. And I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. If there's any questions that any of you may have at this time, I'd be happy to assist. Okay, Vice Chair Pajalski. I uh, think our specialty courts in DuPage are cutting edge. It's, it leads the state. We need to fund it. And I think one person in that is, is really minimal. So I, I think that's phenomenal. But the comment that I think meant the most to me was going to probation early to negotiate a contract. I hear from those people. We have a great probation department. We have great employees. So thank you. So it shouldn't take two years into the contract to settle. So thank you for being proactive in going into that earlier. Thank you. Well, I plan to personally stick my nose in that earlier too. I know we have negotiators and we have this and there's certain times when chief judge, you should be here and certain times chief judge, you shouldn't be here. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to be there more to show not only my involvement in it and my intent and interest in it, but also my respect for those people who I'm negotiating with. I want them to know we respect them also, and let's get this job done so we keep this functioning. Right. Uh, Member Dessert. Thank you. I just um, wanted to say that uh, I appreciate everything that you do. And one of the things, the term that stuck with me, the quote that stuck with me is this budget approval is essential. And I just wanted you to know that you have my support. You do excellent work over there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honored by that. Uh, thank you, Member Kajewski. Yeah, I just had one question. It was a great presentation, uh, Judge. Um, and I noticed it's in the probation um, with the salaries. And, you know, it's 2.5% COLA, I assume, for the union. Regular staff is only, non unions only get 2% COLA. I look at figuring that out. But the one question here it says your head count is 169. It says the actual positions filled is 153. And nine positions will be filled, and seven will remain vacant. But then it says we want to add one more FTE, we want to add another headcount to increase to 170. So if we're keeping seven of them vacant, I mean, why does it need to hire another or increase the headcount by another one? Can I ask Bob McClellan to come, come forward and he can answer that better than me? I know just enough facts to be dangerous about that. And I think he can help us with more specific. Yeah, so the write-up says your current headcount's 169. You have 153. You're going to hire nine more people to so get up to 162, and you're going to keep seven vacant. But then you want to add another one to go to 170. Yes, we're, we're moving one position from the DUI evaluation budget to the um, probation general fund budget. So that's the, the additional uh, one that we're, would make it 170. The 169 is the um, county's approved headcount but we're budgeting for less than that. So, but you're not going to hire seven? I mean, seven are just going to be vacant? Should we just get rid of them? Or Those are just positions that the, the county has has given us that we have not filled. Yeah, well, you know, it looks like you got 153 and you're going to hire nine, but you say you're going to keep seven vacant. I'm not even sure why we have, if, if you don't need them. If you're going to need them, of course, we want to keep them. But if you don't need them, I'm not even sure why we have them. In the head. Yeah, and, and we, we, we set a budget figure and based on that budget figure, we, we uh, fill a certain number of that headcount, and we're comfortable filling um, the 163 62. positions rather than 107. Well, if we don't need them, should we not have them? Because I mean, at the end of the year, we get the whole budget together. We always say, here's our headcount, here's our headcount. But if we got a headcount in there that we're never going to fill, I mean, if you need them, by all means, keep them in there. But Yeah, and, and I'm not sure moving forward if we're going to need those um, moving next year into when uh, the Safety Act starts impacting probation. Sure. It's not impacting probation this year, but next year it may. With the, with okay, I, I don't know. I just have a question. Why, if we're not using that account, why are we even including them? And if next year we have to add them, we can add them in. But I mean, I don't know why we would have that yeah. account. I don't, I don't think you're alone in that in, in thinking that way. And I think moving forward through finance, sure. there's some ideas that coming down that we're going to be hearing about. But for now, this is the way it's been okay. done. I so. mean, even if we keep two of them, we need them down the road. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. And, and there will definitely be a need down the road as well. We, we thought about that as far as, okay, do we give those back and then we come back in and do this again, do this yo-yo type thing. They're definitely gonna be needed with this new Safety Act activities. We just don't know to what extent and how, but at least we're gonna be better able to hit the ground running with those available to us than we are if we quote unquote, give them back and then come back for other things. We got seven head count that we don't weren't going to fill, but we're going to fill them now with the safety act at least. That may well be. Absolutely, fine. sir. All right, yep. thank you. Thank you. I, I see our finance chair yeah. here. Um, and just, just for <laughs> clarification, those seven are, you said you did not budget for those, correct? Okay. Yeah. So that, I think that's, you know, for now, maybe it's not a huge deal if we leave the seven there. They're not budgeted for. That exactly. way you don't have to come back and exactly. beg for more employees, right? You have them there reserved for next year if you need them. And then after that, maybe we can you know, reevaluate in the next couple of years to see if you still need those additional seven. But, you know, as long as they're not in the budget. Um, well, we're fortunate right now. There's going to be a lot of reevaluation over the next couple of years with all the things that are happening. And they're all a bunch of moving parts. Nothing is dead bang finalized yet. We're all kind of questioning what the next six months, year, two years is going to be, how we're going to function, how we're going to fill all those needs. There are going to be additional personnel needed across the board to take care of the, the legislation that's here, regardless of how it might be amended or or the like. And we'll be ready for that when that comes in. I'm Ro Ozark. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, speaking of personnel, what how, how would you characterize your retention rate, especially something like a first line probation officer position, that sort of position, do you? I think it's been outstanding retention rate along the way. I, I mean, you can, if you have specific numbers, you can address that, Bob, but um, there's just been a great group of people down there. I made a point when I became chief judge to set up a meeting, first of all, with all the supervisors. Second of all, I've been downstairs meeting everybody, getting to know everybody. The county hands out these service awards for five, 10, 15, 20 years. Well, it used to be they'd come over to our office and they'd go down and be sitting on someone's desk. I said, well, that's silly. This is a neat thing. They got. I opened up one. I said, wow, this is really nice. They get a nice gift in there. So I have them come into the chief judge's office every time to get those awards. And I spend some time talking with them, getting to know them. The 15, 20, 25, 30 year awards, it's impressive the number that we have. So I think our retention is amazing, but I'll let you finalize that. Yeah, historically, we're at about 15% loss per year. And it's primarily the younger people who are there, gain some experience, then move on to other counties. In supervisory positions or, or higher level positions. So um, our retention levels is, is very good in probation. Thank you. All right, great. Um, seeing, seeing no more questions from the committee, I, I would just like to say I really appreciate your thoughtful presentation. Um, I, I, for one, think we might have one of the most charming chief judges in the state. <laughs> <laughs> so, we always enjoy hearing from you. Thank you all very much. Um, and I'd also like to thank, thank the team from the, from the circuit court. I think it's we really we have a court system that we can all be very proud of in DuPage County. So thank you very much. And um, I think we're going to be looking forward to hearing more from the eviction court going forward. I think that's going to be another kind of groundbreaking thing we can all be proud of. It's kind of heartbreaking. It's, it's going to be at the same time. But your work right now has been put in and we look forward to hearing progress. Well, I appreciate your, your kind comments and this presentation that was put forth. It wasn't put forth by charming me sitting in my office. Yeah. Every single one of them had input. We came in, we met, we practiced with questions. We went over oversight. We did devil's advocate. We had kind of contrast. Well, why is this? Why is this? Why aren't we doing this? It's an amazing group that comes together. I'm the figurehead of a pyramid that is an amazing base. And I'm honored to have all of them assist me in this job. So thank you all very much. Well, thanks to all of you. And with that, we'll move to old business. Do we have any old business? All right, do we have any new business? All right, then I will take a motion to adjourn. So, all right, second, all in favor? Aye. All right, September 7th, next meeting. Thank